Ken Trahan with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our first NBC weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 31 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. First NBC Bank. Well, the Hornets won last night. They beat Cleveland at the arena, in case you didn't notice, since it was Easter Sunday, and you might have been distracted, and they played pretty well in the process and hurt themselves even more for another draft pick to get up high there. Well, it's into April now. We've got, what, 17 days left in the regular season, and most of it is going to be spent on the road. The Hornets vacate the premises for more than a week now. It's a five-game West Coast road trip as they get out of the way for the women's Final Four coming to town. I believe, what, just two home games left at this point. Correct. So it's, uh, yeah, not a lot of chances left to see them. Road versus home, you'd have to figure that their record is going to reflect that going down the stretch. And we'll see how it finishes out. But, you know, still this could have been a team that, that certainly had packed it in and they continue to go out and play. Could it end up hurting them? as it results in the draft possibilities certainly but at least you feel a little bit encouraged going into next year yeah you do and again ryan anderson was outstanding gravis vasquez back on track played very well last night really impressed with the year he's had and with the way he's played so you have something to build with moving forward but as mentioned five game road trip now women's final four comes in lenny and two number one seeds are gone yeah hey look this is when you're talking about women's basketball if you followed the sport at any length anytime the number one seeds don't get here it's surprising anytime two number one seeds don't get to the round of eight it's extraordinarily surprising and when one of them is Baylor who a lot of people thought was the consensus to win the national title then it's really surprising oh by the way uh, this this was interesting story here on on the way in this morning Baylor had a digital billboard up uh championing their university and excellence with a picture of Brittany Griner in downtown New Orleans this morning. I wonder how quickly that contract got canceled. Yeah, no kidding. And Kim Mulkey not coming home. So uh, that's the way it goes. Louisville, perfect storm. They shot the ball great. They played physical and, and they won. So congratulations to them. As for the men's final four, we now know the four teams that are there. And if anybody can tell me they had these four, they're lying. There's no way. Yeah, a few people did, I guess, from really? what, we hear, what we hear out of all these brackets, but they might have just been pulling them out of a hat, possibly. But, you know, the Final Four was in New Orleans last year. It's going to Atlanta this weekend, women's Final Four here in New Orleans. But what's interesting is, is you hear all these histories about this team is making its first Final Four appearance since and this and that. You see an awful lot of ties to New Orleans. Louisville played in the Final Four last year in New Orleans. Syracuse in its first Final Four since 2003. In New Orleans. Michigan in its first Final Four since 1993 in New Orleans. Wichita State hasn't been since 1965 when the Superdome wasn't even thought about yet, but their last Elite Eight run was in New Orleans in 1981 when they lost to LSU. LSU. Yeah, so a, a lot of uh, a lot of history with these schools that are going to the Final Four as it relates to New Orleans and the Superdome. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and we'll see how it all pans out, but Louisville has to be looked at as a favorite at this point, even though they lost a key player uh, with a terrible injury yesterday. It goes without saying. As for the Saints, they signed Victor Butler on Friday of last week, and obviously they feel like they've got a guy that's going to be able to come in and compete for a starting position. And frankly, I think you'd have to be surprised if he doesn't start. Yeah, you would think. And, you know, obviously there are not a lot of true outside linebacker types in a 3 4 system that were there. And obviously Butler fits that mold. You will see some guys that will transition into a 3-4 outside linebacker type most notably Martez Wilson Jr. Golett but you know it's going to be you know it's it's a guy that you in you know, a spot that you need to fill and clearly that whole front seven area is through the draft and through free agency probably the biggest area at this point the Saints need to fill yeah so they're not finished yet I'm sure that there's more on the horizon, Coleman's been offered. We'll see what happens with Tracy Porter. Awesome was still out there, but I think Porter's probably the more likely possibility where they are concerned. College baseball, Tulane salvaged a game from Rice. Good for them. More importantly, LSU goes to Missouri. They win three. They're now 8-1 and one in the conference. Tied with Vanderbilt for the conference lead, and they're awfully good. Even though their Sunday pitching is still suspect, and two of their key players in Ross and Jones aren't hitting. But let me tell you this. If the season ended right now, I think Mason Katz is the National Player of the Year. I agree. What a year he is having. He had home runs in all three games of the series this weekend at Missouri's and double figures in home runs at the midway point, which you know with these bats is unheard of. 
Uh, he has been extraordinary. The young man out of New Orleans played at Jesuit, and uh, you, you have to be happy for him. And, of course, a chance to see LSU in New Orleans this week, uh, Wednesday night, Zephyr Field against Southern Miss in the Wally Pontiff Jr. Classic. Yep. I look forward to that. Obviously, they've got Alcorn State first. And then, of course, the Voodoo lost their second game. They're 1-1 one one now, disappointing offensive performance. Good defensively, but obviously they need to get this offense going as they head into a bye week. Yeah, and, uh, and unfortunately, the way the schedule is going to fall, there's going to be you know some gaps in there with some road games and things like that. Not a lot of chances to see the Voodoo at home over the next two months, maybe with just one or two games at home the next two months now with a, with a backloaded home schedule and a gap in there. But, uh, you know, still one and one and one after the first two. And, and now you've got the bye week to try to correct some things. Yeah, I'd be remiss not to mention as Zephyr's played uh, the parent club Saturday, over 9,000 fans at Zephyr Field. Marlins won 8 to nothing. It was great to get a parent club here, and the Zephyr's open their season this week on the road with 8 before they come home for their opener on April 12th. Yeah, and it's a, yeah, it was a chance to get to see some major league action here. And as I, I wrote about yesterday, you know, it's it's a challenge to get to watch Major League Baseball in New Orleans these days. So it's uh, you know, it was good to be able to see that and the chance for an, another generation of fans to be able to experience in person a Major League team coming to town. Oh, by the way, Kenyans win the Crescent City Classic again, over eighteen thousand participating. But you kind of knew that going in, right? And then last but not least, revolutionary. What do you think? Any real shot? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, when you see a favorite win, when you see a long shot win last year, like Hero of Order at over 100 to 1, you could pretty much discount it. He's, you know, he wasn't even nominated for the Kentucky Derby, as it, as it were. So, uh, revolutionary, you know, you, you got to feel like maybe the Louisiana Derby winner has a chance to win the Kentucky Derby. It's happened twice in 100 years. Maybe on the 100th anniversary or the 100th running of the race, maybe the third time will come about. That's a lot of stuff, but that's our first NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank, 31 locations throughout the metro New Orleans area. Lenny, as always, thanks for the visit. Hey, we'll see you later this week. Hey, hope you had a great Easter. Have a great week. God bless you one and all. See you next time.